The horror exhibition stand includes 13 costumes, 6 men's and 7 women's. In the showcase at the front of the podium are presented accessories worn with said traditional costumes. Throughout the times, the way a woman presented herself had always been important. She would adorn her outfit with embroidery and especially with ornaments, Venetian beads, strings of semi-precious or precious stones, such as garnets and corals, as well as necklaces. In everyday life, however, women wore fewer adornments. It was only during celebrations that the costume was embellished with the previously mentioned strings of beads made of precious or semi-precious stones. Earrings, rings and bracelets were also worn. Samples of traditional embroidery, buckles, belts, headcloth, etc. are also present. On the background wall is the mural painting of a village Hora, author Filimon Hamuraro. The painting represents a village with traditional houses, wooden gates and stone fences, houses with verandas and porches, with gardens and vigorous trees with golden autumn leaves, a well and a church. In the middle of the painting are many villagers, gathered around the young people dancing the hora in a circle. In the everyday life of the village, usually in the village square, on a large and clear space, the horas were danced. This was the meeting place of the community. According to tradition, the young men organized the hore, gathered the money and paid the musicians for their songs. The older girls were exempt from paying. Instead, they prepared the table and food for the musicians. Every year, there were seven mandatory hore to be organized on each of the big holidays, Christmas, St. Basil, Epiphany, Easter, Dominica Mare, Ascension of the Lord, or Ispas, as well as the village's Patron's Day. The Hora would start at noon, after the divine service was held at the church, and would end close to sunset. Young men and women, newlyweds, but also parents, grandparents and children, each of them danced Hora in their own circles. Boys and girls would ritually join the Hora on their 16th birthday, with honors at Christmas or St. Basil's. The boys joining were sung chants of vivat, as they were raised high and carried by the other young men, after which they would have to honor them with a cask of wine. If the boy had ignored the custom and joined the Hora on his own, without the consent of the group, he was punished on the very same day. After the dance was over, he would be caught and forced to drink a bucket full of salt water. The next day, the culprit had to serve a cask of wine to the group of young men he was going to join, in order to make peace with them, after which he was considered worthy of joining their hora. In all localities, the boys would start the first dance, and the girls would join hora on the second dance. They were allowed to dance only if invited by the boys, and had to dance with each one of the boys who invited them. If the girl talked back, or refused to dance with the boy, she would be taken out of the hora, accompanied by music, and sent home. To rejoin their hora, the girl's parents would have to treat the boys to a cup of wine. Then the boy who liked the girl would invite her to rejoin their hora once again. By participating in the hora, young people would gain a new identity, would be seen and accepted as mature and responsible people. Hora as a whole was a traditional festivity where folk dances were played and danced the steps to which were known to all villagers, from young to old. Hora contributed to the organization and socialization of youth, to the strengthening of their value system, and to the passing of social and cultural experience from one generation onto the next. In this context, the wealth of traditional music and dance was developed and then passed on over time. At the village Hora, every villager dressed in their best and most beautiful celebration clothes. Their traditional Moldovan costume belongs to the wider family of Romanian traditional costumes, having a place of honor among the traditional costumes of the peoples of the world. The costume exhibition showcases the richness and beauty of the traditional wear. We will describe from left to right the 13 costumes exhibited on the podium in a semicircle. The costumes are representative of the inhabitants of our cultural space, dating from the 19th to 20th centuries. The first three exhibits represent the traditional clothing from the northern part of Moldova, two men's winter's costumes with sumane, long traditional coats, and hats made of lamb, 
and one women's summer costume with a maram, headscarf. Next are two costumes, exhibits 4 and 5, men's and women's costumes respectively from Kamenka. The men's costume has a shirt sewn at the front and a straight collar, with a white red girdle and a straw hat, while the women's costume has a seraphim and a dark shawl. Exhibit 6. A man's costume from the central part of Moldova, consisting of a long shirt with a classic collar, a white girdle, and a hat. In the middle, Exhibit 7 and 8, there is a pair of costumes, a woman's and a man's costume for festivities, most likely wedding costumes, from the Chernowitz region, with traditional vests called bonditsi, sewn with colorful floral ornaments. Number 9 shows a woman's costume from the collection of the Zemstvo Museum, sewn with dark woolen threads and a Katrinsa skirt, in horizontal stripes, with a narrow girdle, a marama, and a string rich with beads. On numbers 10 and 11, we can admire Bulgarian costumes. The man's one has a thick hat, a dark colored suman, and thick pants, as well as a white red girdle. The woman's costume has a white blouse, with a seraphim and a thick apron, woven with rich colored flowers, a girdle with an inlaid metal buckle and two strings of gold pieces or semi-precious stones, a dark yellow brobada called headscarf, and a red flower near the cheek. Exhibit 12 represents a traditional woman's costume from the Vulcanesht region. It includes a white blouse, a marama, and a black katrinze skirt woven with geometric elements. The last in line is the Gagauz woman's costume from Komrat with a blouse and a long dark colored skirt, white leather bonditsa, with geometric ornaments, and a yellow headkerchief called Batista, as well as a string of beads. The Moldovan national costume is sober, but still full of color and brilliance, highlighting every stage and aspect of human life, youth and old age, joy and sadness, but also the most significant moments in a family's life, the birth of a child, baptism, and the banquet afterwards, as well as the wedding day, and finally, death. From ancient times, the clothing was made in the peasant household itself, from linen, hemp, cotton, silk, wool, hair, and natural leather. Each and every piece that makes up the costume is important. However, the blouse is considered the most essential part of the costume. In order to keep it in the circuit of world values, on December 1, 2022, the blouse with altitza, embroidery on the shoulders, was registered by UNESCO in the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of the humanity. The woman's blouse covers most of the body and has the richest ornamentation. According to the cutter of the blouse, we can distinguish straight blouse, blouse with neck folds, or blouse with altitza, blouse with a stand-up collar, or blouse with patches. The oldest type of blouse is the one with neck folds, often found in the northern, central, and less so in the southern parts. The blouse is embellished with ornamental motifs, placed on the chest, sleeves, around the neck, and on the hem. The embroidery takes up little space compared to the white background of the blouse, but it is very visible, having a great effect. The beauty of the blouse embodies the artistic taste of the craftswoman and the embroidery techniques she applied to it. The motifs, in their vast majority, are geometric, however, the vegetal ones are strongly stylized. The main colors are red, black, white, to which accents of yellow, blue, brown and green are applied, to add nuance to the freshness and harmony of the colors. They are also embroidered with silk threads, wool, moulin, metallic thread, sequins and tiny beads. The second piece of clothing in a woman's costume is the katrinze a traditional type of skirt. It was traditionally woven in domestic conditions, with ornamental bands at the bottom or all across the surface with stylized plant and geometric motifs on top of a black or blue canvas. The flowers chosen for embroidery are of different colors. A white petticoat was worn underneath, the hems being decorated with embroidery. The contrinze is adjusted at the waist with a thick or narrow girdle or ropes chosen and woven from the highest quality wool or hair, with geometric, vegetal and floral ornaments. A variety of head coverings were found in the women's wardrobe, the head wrap, naframa or marama, which are both soft and fine fabric headscarves, 
the first with ornamental stitches and the second without. Both made of cotton or gossamer silk, triangular white cloth with embroidery and lace, the bodies, a light linen headscarf, shalinka, heavy headscarf made of wool, and basma, soft headkerchief, were also worn. On top of the blouse, in cool weather, the bundizza or keptar, traditional vest, was worn, which is made of lambskin with fur on the inside and with the edges adorned with black wool curls, while the festive keptar was embroidered with colored beads. The costumes from the Kamenka region, the villages of Podoima, Podoimica, and Valia Adinka, differ in their structure from other costumes found in the ethnographic areas of Moldova. They are characterized by a variety of shapes, cuts, and colors. The Kamenka women's blouse, with neck folds, preserves the tradition of the ancient garment. The blouse embroidery has the following motifs, the year of wheat and the tree of life. Originally, the blouse was worn with a coat, and later, under Ukrainian influence, it was worn with a sarafan, embellished with velvet stripes, cinched in the middle with a wide red satin girdle, and then topped with a narrow woolen girdle. Women in this area wore woolen socks, low-heeled shoes, or boots with show laces. Characteristic of the centric area is the blouse with folds, geometric motifs, and the S letter symbols, the letter or woolen bundice, the katrinsa skirt, and the long skirt. The women's costume of the southern area consisted of a blouse with patches, embroidered on the chest with a floral motif in four to five colors, with wide sleeves and lace on the edges. It is distinguished from the other areas by its pastel colors, and its modest woven and embroidered geometric ornaments. The apron richly embroidered with geometric and vegetal motifs, the white skirt woven with undyed wool thread, are indispensable for the southern woman's costume. Battistele, headkerchiefs, are accessories for girls' festive wear. The socialization of girls, their going out into the world to confirm their age status, took place through the exchange of said Battiste. The girl who joined Hora kept a Battiste on her at all times. She held it in her hand or secured it at her waist, so that others could hold onto her during the dance. The boys who had to leave for the army would also receive a basmalutze, a handkerchief, made by their hands of the girl they loved. In other regions of the country, the bride-to-be also prepared, together with her friends, basmalutze that were to be given to the vornice and druste, groomsmen and bridesmaids respectively, or were penned to their own chest instead. On holidays, everyone would wear leather footwear, knee boots, lace boots, and loafers. Women wore knee boots or pumps, which had a high heel, thigh-high boots with buttons on one side, and a tall shaft that could be tied with laces. The following pieces are part of the men's fall costume. A hat made of lambskin for wintertime, and a hat made of straw or felt for summertime. A shirt, yitzar, trousers, bernevich, same as the Yitzar, but wider and longer. Bundica, a vest. The Suman, heavy coat. Girdle or Kimir, a white leather waist belt. Knee boots or a pinch, flat leather shoes. The hats made from lambskin were worn in several ways. The tall or Tsugoyata hat, also called Turkanyaska, worn in the north and the central region. The Mokanyaska hat, similar to the Trilby, popularly called Retezata worn by the inhabitants of the villages in the south. Most peasants, however, prefer the straw hat. In summer, during hot weather, such a hat protected the head while ensuring the free circulation of air. Unlike the straw hat, the felt hat was less popular in our cultural space. It was made in special workshops and was worn by Mazil and Rezesh, petit bourgeois and ayomen, respectively, near the end of the 19th century, who were influenced by urban culture. The men from the villages in the south wore hats decorated with flowers. The men's shirt was of several types of cuts, tunic type with a stand-up collar or with a patch. The front and back are cut from a single piece of cloth, each sleeve from a single piece of fabric, with a gusset and a patch attached under the arm, with a small straight or turned down collar which is tied with two tassels. The embroidery is located on the collar, chest, shoulders, sleeves and hems of the shirt. It is preferably executed in one color, either blue, green, magenta purple, yellow, brown, or black, 
The man's wedding shirt, most often, was embroidered in white. The middle of the shirt was secured with a 3 or 4 meter long and 18 to 20 centimeter wide girdle, made of wool or hair, woven on racks in two, four, or more threads. Young men wore girdles ornamented with geometric and floral motifs, while older men had red girdles, or natural color wool girdles. Kimirile, white waist belts with pockets, were also worn, which were made of leather garnished with colored leather applications and metal studs. Kimirile were worn by men with a higher social and material status, as it offered them the possibility to attach or store their pouch, knife, pipe, flint, and fire striker. In the summer, they walked around dressed in a shirt and izmeni, a kind of undergarment trousers tightened at the waist with a thread called brachinar. Izmenile and itzari trousers were sewn from thin white homespun fibers woven into two threads of hemp, linen, or cotton. They were worn tucked into boots or left to hang over the shoes. Itzari were considered celebration trousers, but also to be worn in cold weather. They were sewn in the same manner as the izmeni, from a fabric of goat's wool and woven in four threads. Bernevici, similar to the Itzari, wide and long peasant trousers made of thick fabric completed the men's outfit in winter. They were sewn from sheep's wool fabric, woven into two threads and then wrapped in a piwa, apparatus for thickening wool fabrics in warm water, or by hand, so it gained in density. They were of the natural color of the wool, most of them brown, but they were also worn in gray or black. Punditsa, a vest that covers down to the middle of the body or even goes past it in length, the one specific to the tradition of the northern villages, is fitted to the body, split at the front, richly ornamented on the edges, to emphasize the main lines of the garment. The ornamentation of the leather applications would be embellished with additional embroidery. Buntitsa that was common in the central and southern villages is slightly wider than the northern version, retains the natural color of the sheepskin, and has ornaments with pastoral motifs made out of brown or black leather. The suman is a very widely worn coat in all localities, including two types, straight suman and flared suman. The sumanya could be of different colors, but still keeping the natural color of the wool, brown, white, black, gray. The most common suman were the brown ones, being worn on both ordinary days and holidays. Traista is a piece of great utility, a type of bag frequently found in most areas of the country, as an accessory to the fall costume, both women's and men's. Most traista were made of rectangular and square woolen fabric with geometric and floral motifs. The favorite festive footwear were loafers, laced boots, rain boots, and knee boots. When out plowing, sowing, mowing, reaping, out grazing sheep or cows, the best footwear were the opinch, a very simple leather footwear. The Bulgarian costume. The main feature of the women's costume can rightfully be considered its variety of sarafans, dresses, and skirts. The basic elements of the women's national costume is the sukman, a sarafan worn with or without sleeves. Decorated at the bottom with a velvet ribbon and embroidery, the apron is worn over the sarafan or skirt. The second version of the women's costume is the saya, consisting of a long-sleeved blouse. The length of the skirt can vary, from the middle of the knee to the ankle. The main colors of the saya are black, white and blue. On top they wore embroidered aprons, as well as the sukman. In terms of headwear, the women had a white batista, headkerchief with embroidery on the edges, and on top, a yellow, black, cotton basma, soft headkerchief, embellished on the sides with one or two floral ornaments. Around their necks, they wore strings of beads and gold pieces. The Bulgarian national costume for men is special for its darker shade. The costume consists of a shirt, trousers, waistcoat, doublet, girdle, hat, and boots. The shirt is sewn from cotton fabric, woven at home, white in color, with narrow sleeves ending with a cuff. The narrow vertical collar is fastened at the front. Ornaments are arranged on the collar, cuffs, chest, with geometric embroidery, executed with yellow silk threads. The trousers are wide, 
sewn from woolen fabric, dark brown in color. The waistcoat with a stand-up collar, narrow sleeves, and white cuffs is embellished with appliques. The shirt is fastened with a white red girdle with fringes on the edges. They wore black leather boots, not too tall, with iron horseshoes. The Gagawu's women's costume consists of a blouse, skirt, apron, and headkerchief. The blouse is made of homemade fabric, embellished with lace and buttons. It has a straight collar, a narrow sleeve, pleated at the shoulder, ending in cuffs. The skirt is wide, made of home-woven wool, and is pleated at the back. The apron is an accessory of the women's costume, woven at home as well. Most often, it is dark in color. The hems are trimmed with a velvet ribbon, and the edges with a fine lace. Women wear cotton headscarves with silk fringes, triangular cloth tied at the back. The black leather loafers, made by cobblers, had medium-height heels. The main parts of the Gagawu's men's costume are the shirt, trousers, hat, and doublet. The shirt is made of homemade fabric, viz. The cut is of the tunic type, with a stand-up collar, made of special cloth. It fastens at the front or at the side, and it's straight and narrow. The right sleeve ends with a cuff. The trousers, demidon, are homewoven out of thick wool fabric. An accessory of the costume is the doublet. In cold weather, men wore thick hats made of lamb fur, and in summer, hats. Traditional men's shoes are made of pigskin and are called cherik, a variety of opinch that were worn with homespun fabric foot wraps, saj, and tied with a narrow leather lace.